Hi everybody! In this segment I'm working on the dual display. I thought I would stop for a moment before removing the testing LEDs. Let me explain what's going on here. Here we have a 555 timer that's generating a clock signal. The clock goes to the 74LS76JK dual flip-flop. The flip-flops are wired in such a way that they create a 2-bit counter. The flip-flop outputs go to the 74LS139 2-4 line decoder. Because of the inverted outputs, only one is low at a time. This works well for connection to the common cathode 7-segment LED. The outputs of the flip-flops also go to the 28C16 EEPROM address lines A8 and A9. This selects the bank of memory that displays the current digit. A push-button switch is used to control the 28C16 EEPROM address line A10. This selects the bank of memory that determines whether signed or unsigned values are shown. In this installment, I'm just about ready to begin moving all the yellow control lines to the control display board. I have a new four-digit, seven-segment green LED display. I was hoping it would be brighter than the dual-digit red LED displays, but they're not much better. The multiplexing saves on the number of EE proms, but you end up with a 25% duty cycle pulse width modulated LED. The other difference is the display already has each digit's anodes internally connected. This results in a 12-pin connection. 7 segments plus the 1 decimal point plus 4 cathode connections equals 12. I appreciated not having to place all those jumpers. In hindsight though, it would have been better to wire the LED anode segments with fewer crossovers and then reprogram the EEPROM to match. The wiring did get a little tight. So first, I'll get the adder outputting to the data bus to give us something to display. I'll begin by putting the program counter onto the data bus and setting the BN until it holds a 1. There we go. Next, I'll remove the program counter from the data bus. And now, I want to output the adder to the data bus. So now we have the adder going out to the data bus. Hmm. The AN was already set to latch the data bus, so now the adder is adding the A and B registers and putting the sum out on the data bus. On the next clock, the A register latches the new value, and so it continues to count. Did you notice nothing is happening on the display? Well, that's because the display in has not been set yet. Once I set it, you can see the display register has LEDs to show the latched number being displayed. I think I would have rather used the same chips that I used in all of the other registers. It wasn't too hard to run the lines over so that they'd line up nicely for the LEDs and then run them up to the EEPROM data lines. After all, this project is all about those blinky lights. I'll turn off the bright light so you can see the output display. You can see that the readout is counting up. I'll speed the clock up a bit. What you just saw there was the display rolling over to minus 128 and then counting up towards zero. This is because the switch is in signed mode. Eventually, it passes zero and continues to count up to 127. It's about to roll over. I'll switch it to unsigned mode when it does. Now we're counting from 0 to 255, and then it rolls over to 0 again. I really do like the way Ben used the A10 line to switch between signed and unsigned modes. 
It's just a shame the multiplexing cuts the brightness so much. I think the old three-digit design with the three EE proms was superior in that respect. I'm not unhappy with this result though. Okay, well, we're going to call that good for part three. In part four, we'll take a look at the instruction decoder. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And uh, if you'd like to support future projects, there's a link down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.